So with our first piece of paper, we're going to fashion a background and we're going to use what is called the wet on wet uh, watercolor technique. Now I'm going to be using tube watercolors uh, and um, students can also use the watercolor set if they would like. I'm going to use the tube so that it's more visible on uh, the video. So if you're using a tube, uh, of watercolor you need to also have a paper plate these are a lot like acrylics and so you will want except that you will add more water to them uh, so what we want to do is we want to have blended a be blended background and we're going to end up using about three quarters okay of our um, Back, background piece of paper okay so uh, we need to think about that when we want to see think about well what are we going to actually see and what we're going what are we going to cut off all right so what you want to do is you want to take a brush and put it into your water and then pick up some color and it will start looking like this. Now we want a little bit of kind of texture, okay? We don't want it to just all be, that'll make the, all be just smooth because this will make your <clears throat> background a little more interesting. And so you just keep going with the water all the way to the edge, and then you bring your pigment. And you kind of scooch it like that. Okay, so then you can also bring in some other colors of blue and blend those. Yeah, we're trying to help our background be a little more interesting than just a plain flat. Add some more water. You're just having fun with this. And then I could also add another color of blue if I want. Pick up. And since we're blending, you don't need to uh, clean out your brush yet. We will when we get jump into another color family. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to move into the greens. So I do want to clean off my uh, brush pretty well, and I'm going to have my greens ready to go here. And I'm going to start with a little blue green. There we go. It didn't want to come out of the tube. So I'm going to blend that into my existing blue. And then I'm going to pick up a different color of green. Again, nice and wet. Kind of 
blend those together. I don't think I want that one. I'm going to go with more of a lime green. <clears throat> Again, we're going to overlap a little bit so that we're blending those two colors of green together. Okay, and now I'm going to pick up gray because I want some sidewalks in my neighborhood. Trying to see if I have any other grays in my, I don't, so we'll keep using this. And I won't pick up as much pigment, so it'll be a little bit lighter, so we can get some variation. Just by the amount of, co of uh, not color, the amount of water that we're using. Now we're going to see all of this, so we need to... all the way down to the bottom. We're going to be cutting off up here. Okay. So what we're going to do is set this off to the side and let it dry really well. So this is, our background is dry and we are now ready to cut this top part off and we want to come down about you know three or four inches on our piece of paper and then just do kind of a nice sloping and curving not radical curves or anything but just a nice upper line there and then we are going to cut it with our scissors And then we're going to set this piece of paper off to the side. We might want to use it later, so don't crumple it up or anything. Okay, so here is our background. And the next thing that we want to do is fold it. Make a nice crease, okay? And then open it up. And then we want to flip it over and fold it up. Take, excuse me, take this line to the fold, this edge to the fold. And we want to flip it around and take that edge to the fold. Make sure that this is straight. And when you're teaching people how to 
do this, you want to always have them run their hands down and hit the center and then out and then do the same thing. And that'll be a nice, nice fold. So what happens, I'm going to do this fold again. What happens is that you have now have the ability for your background to stand up, right? It's kind of hard to show on this video, but you can kind of see what it is. Okay. So now it's important that you do this before you do any, the, the next step, because when we start gluing objects onto this concertina, you don't want them to be straddling these folds. Okay. Uh, so now we can set that off to the side and get our second piece of paper out and start drawing um, our Heidelberg inspired neighborhood. So we want to make a neighborhood look like an art installation. Okay. So you can use a variety of things to uh, to draw, you can have them draw with a pencil first, like I've done, and then you can trace it with a black Sharpie. You could use a black crayon or uh, an oil pastel. It's, you know, whatever supplies they have on hand. And so I started thinking about things that you might find, you know, kind of taking my cue from the Heidelberg project. And if you recall, uh, uh, Tyree really likes to use dots. Um, he likes clocks. Um, there are, you know, abandoned cars, um, as well as the houses that have been turned into, uh, pieces of art. Uh, so we're going to start with a clock and encourage the kids to come up with their own designs, but if they get stuck, have them go back to that concept of, well, what did he use in his neighborhood, right? And so we're going to draw the objects that we want to glue to our concertina background. And we're going to watercolor over this. So the first thing is to draw and then trace. And encourage them to, you know, the kids will get a little freaked out if you want them to just draw with the, the black Sharpie. They like to have the ability to erase. So have them draw with their pencil first. And then when they're happy with that, uh, go over um, with the Sharpie. Now, they can use, you know, uh, bowls and cups and that kind of thing to make round shapes if they want. I'm going to make just a big round dot that I will put place somewhere on the concertina. Oops, it turned out to not be too great, but you can uh, fix that up when we cut out. Um, we'll do another clock here. Remember to encourage them to use bright, bold colors. I'm going to leave this clock without any hands. Squeeze that 11 in there. Okay, um, then I think I'll do a, an abandoned car. Then I can make more lovely by doing some patterns on it. We'll put a little bumper on there. Just encourage them to have fun and to use their imaginations on what sorts of recycled things they could use in their constructed neighborhood. So 
So you could do like a flower on here. You could do stripes with your paints. You could do a rainbow. However, they now encourage them to use simple outside shapes because they will be cutting these out. Okay. And then we're going to do a house. So again, keep the shapes kind of simple. I'm not going to put drapes at the window or even, you know, it could even look like the, the house is kind of, you know, falling down much like they were at the neighborhood at, in Detroit with the older kids. You could probably start having some conversations about neighborhood decay Think about in Lexington where there might be other neighborhoods like this. You know, what could be done to draw attention to them. And then I'm going to make dots on this house. And then I think I'm just going to make a few random dots to have dotting, no, no pun intended, the neighborhood. Just use these as kind of things to layer on our background. Are you able to see? See what I'm doing? Okay, so then we'll do another house. If you want to, you know, pre-draw some of these structures or ideas to give them I their own ideas about how to go about doing this, they might need that kind of guidance. flower on this one too. Again, encourage them to keep things pretty simple because we have a limited amount of time with them. Um, I anticipate that this will take two class sessions. So anything that they create but is not finished, make sure that they have their name on it. And if you see that perhaps in the first session you get the concertina done, but you're they're just starting to work on this, make sure that you don't have them cutting out small pieces because nine times out of ten they'll get lost and find a place at the school where they can safely where you can safely put 
their projects, uncompleted projects, and just make sure their names are on it. Because kids will not recognize their own artwork even just a couple of days after they have started it. And I'm going to make this the stripe house. So I'm going to paint these things different colors. Okay, so I probably only have a room on my concertina for um, a couple of other items. So I'm going to do a tree. So you can have them, you know, they could do some shrubs, they could do some flowers, a tree or two. Very simple tree. You can have, you know, you can paste things on, draw and then paint and cut and then paste things, you know, kind of hanging down off the tree if you want. You know, the Heidelberg uh, project uses a lot of stuffed animals in trees and hanging from them. Okay, so then I was going to finish up here with a bench. And they can design their own bench. Okay, so here are our objects. Make sure that you can see all of them. Okay, so the next step is to then start painting them. So the next thing you should do is encourage them to erase any of the pencil marks that are still showing because they will also pop up through the watercolor. Okay. So just kind of clean it up. They're drawing up a little bit. It's also a good idea to, as as you as they're drawing to for you to encourage them to use a light pencil lines so that they can be easier when when you're trying to erase them it can be a lot easier and have them clean off the crumbs so that will interfere with your watercolors Okay, so now we're ready to watercolor. I'm going to show you how to do a couple of these objects in real time, and then I will stop the video and finish them up, and then show you how to assemble the whole thing. Okay, so again, we want to use bright colors. So encourage them to use bright colors and you can paint right over whatever lines because the water the marker is is not water soluble so it will be fine. So just make sure that they are not using 
washable markers. Otherwise, it'll become a muddled mess. So I encourage them to use enough water so they're not getting, you know, dry strokes, but not so much water that they're getting puddles. And also make sure that you that they have a piece of paper toweling and that they clean off their brush in between colors. So we're not going for any fancy painting here. We're just wanting to have them do some basic, basic things. And think about, you know, when you're thinking about your colors, think about what the background's going to be on. So I would say to not use very much uh, blues or, or greens. I mean, they can use some, but they're not going to stand out as much. doesn't want to come out. You won't have to worry about that because the kiddos will be, you'll be using your cake watercolor set, so. They go outside of the lines out there, tell them not to worry about it because you're going to be cutting it out anyway. Okay, so I'm going to continue painting. I'm going to turn the video off so this doesn't become awfully long. And um, then I'll come back on when I'm done with the painting to show you the next step, which is uh, cutting out the objects. All right, I'm finished with the uh, components for uh, the neighborhood. And it's now time. They're, they're dried. Flatten them out a little bit and now it's time to cut them out so the best way to cut out objects is to kind of cut around like this and be easier to get into all of the little nooks and crannies I 
again, I'm not going to make you sit through a video while you're watching me cut things out. So we will do a few together and then I will stop the video and um, finish cutting these out and then come back to show you how to assemble everything. And then tell the students to make a pile of their objects. It's kind of amazing how they can lose things rather quickly. So putting them in a pile, or sometimes they get inadvertently thrown out. So putting them in a pile off to the side helps with that. So you get the idea of them put their scraps in a pile <clears throat> as well. Okay, so I'm going to finish cutting all of these out and then we'll get back together again for the assembly. All right, so I have all of the pieces together here and you wanna flatten out their background and then you want to encourage the students to just play around um, with all of the pieces without there you go um, without uh, gluing them down and they can hang over the edge they can be up higher um, you can put your tree where you want you just don't want them straddling these these uh, creases okay I think I want to put a clock there and, and use, you know, all of your space. Okay, so with these little wings, I'm just going to pull them off because it makes it a little bit too... this up here and we'll put this here and we'll put the bench there so you can just encourage them to just play around with it a little bit so we're constructing the the neighborhood and we can put some different dots around Here's my car. Lost my car here. So we're going to put the car here. Put some dots just sort of randomly around. It's a little hard to place them. When they're not glued down, but you get the idea. And encourage... You know some overlapping 
Now, with some of the scrap paper, if they want to go back and do maybe some other trees uh, or um, you know something that will, I think I want something here in this area too. So just something that will fill up the space. If you know you could have, if they have other ideas about what kind of recycled materials they want to be in the installation, they can do that. Okay, so I think I want to overlap this. Again, overlapping gives it a sense of depth, and so I think that might be a good, a good thing to encourage students to do. Okay, so then what you do is you got to go panel by panel and get your... glue stick out and then you want to and I like it when things kind of go uh, over the edge a little bit so we'll have this one up here Again, encourage them to use their imagination. <clears throat> and also encourage them to get out all the way to the edge. This is thicker paper, and so you're going to need to push it down and make sure you have plenty of glue on it. Okay, so all of this is kind of sliding around as I'm doing it. but All right, so this big dot... And if they don't get the project done during class, encourage them to take it home and continue adding pieces and details to it. Press that all down. Kind of like how that dot sort of looks like the sun. They're setting or rising. so it doesn't go over the crease. And I think I'll have the, the tree going over the top a little bit too. this over just a little bit. So the important thing is that everything is not just like straight across, boom, 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 right? But that it's got some depth to it. process of them developing an eye for where things can be placed. 
so that there's balance and depth. Let's put this over here. Okay, so now this house I'm going to put up here a little bit. And it's going to put the off the edge. And students are not very comfortable or, or used to art teachers telling them that it's okay to have things going over the edges. Now, most of the time they get the instructions that it should be you know, within a particular piece of paper. So this kind of opens up their, their sense of constructing in pieces in different ways. Put this over so you can see it. Whoops. Okay. And then we're going to overlap. I guess I like the yellow. bench down here. You now if I were to do the painting over again, I would probably make the base of this um, bench a nice bright color. So that's the woulda, shoulda, coulda. But that's good. You can encourage them to look at how they might, you know, improve. And once they put it together and they see that they have, you know, lots, lots of space left over, then that's when they can work with their scrap paper to make some other things. Okay, so now it's hard to show this in a video standing up and make sure that everything is nicely glued down. should look like this and I'm going to take the so I'm hoping you can see that there you go so that is the Heidelberg inspired concertina thanks